Hi, this is David. In our last video, we talked about Microsoft Azure Virtual Machines. And I showed you how to create a, an Azure Virtual Machine based on the, the Windows Server operating system. But did you know that Azure also supports Linux Virtual Machines? A lot of people think that because it's called Microsoft Azure, that there's no Linux, there's no open source support, and nothing could be further from the truth. There are many, many options for creating Linux virtual machines and other open, open source software in Azure. In fact, I think uh, the last time I read there were about 30 to 40 percent of the virtual machines in Azure are in fact Linux virtual machines. And we can create these in the same way we create a Windows virtual machine. Click this big green plus button in the top left of the Azure portal go to compute and you'll see a few of them listed here there's Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7.2 Ubuntu 17.10 and if we say see all we should see a few more of them in here uh, there's another Red Hat down here Ascent OS the SUSE these are all Linux machines we can click more and see a lot of them and if we have a yeah, desire to see a particular one let's go to just put in Ubuntu here you'll see that there's a bunch of these things. Some of them are managed by Microsoft, some of them are managed by third parties. So take a look at them and look at the licensing on them and you can do decide what which one you want. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab one of these things. I'll take this Ubuntu server right here. It's managed by Canonical. I'll take the first one here. It has uh, Ubuntu server 14.04 LTS. That's the version number. A little summary pops up and I click create and then I have to give it a name tell Azure do I want a regular hard drive or a solid state drive do I want to authenticate using a public key or a password now I'm, I think passwords are easier so I, I'll select that one and I'll type in my password notice that it, that red exclamation point pops up until I meet the criteria for that password Type it in again to make sure I didn't mistype it. Um, I uh, put it in my only subscription here, and then I'll add it to a resource group. I'll call it the uh, DG Test um, Linux DMRG, and specify what region it's in. South Central U.S. is fine. I'm, I happen to be in the U.S. right now, and I thought I gave it a username. I'll give my username now. I'll say my first initial last name will be my username right here. So I've selected the region South Central U.S. because I happen to be in the U.S. and I, I want to have low latency. It'll be pretty quick for me to go from here in Chicago to wherever the South Central U.S. data center is. Um, these are, now I've, I filled the basics, now I'm in the size, I select the size of my machine and the ones that are in, available in South Central and other things that I've selected are starred. And I can see if I pick this one right here, it has a two CPUs, eight gigabytes RAM, Etc. Dated four data disks and so on. It'll cost me about eighty-one dollars a month if I leave it running all the time for thirty days straight. So I select that. I've got options in here. If I wanted to have some availability sets, I can create that for some redundancy, for some fault tolerance. If I wanted to add several machines to the same virtual network or the same subnet, I could specify that here. Uh, if I wanted to add some extensions, right here, I've got things that I can add if I'm interested in, antivirus and backup and so on. I'm not going to do any of that stuff here. I can have it automatically shut down every day at a certain time. I select the time zone here to be specific about that. I can even have it email me to, to let me know that it's shutting down. That would help me save some money. Um, and then up here, this is important. I, I want to be able to access this machine. I have to tell it how I'm going to access it. So this is required. If I don't want to access it all through uh, anything remote, I, I'll just turn everything off and check that. But really, I do want to get to it. And this is a Linux machine, and the, typically the way that we access a Linux machine is through SSH. So I'm going to open up port 22, which is the default port for SSH, and I'll click on OK. Gave me a little warning that said, hey, you're exposing something to the Internet that could be a potential security risk, but I'm OK with that. Uh, and here, right now, it's just giving me a summary of the machine, and if I had made any mistakes in here, if anything was inconsistent, it would tell me this right here. I'd have a chance to go back and correct it. I can also click on this and see some templates that I could download or save to my library, and that allows me to automate creation of uh, this machine again 
using PowerShell or CLI or .NET or so on. And it has some template files that I can use here. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to create it all through the portal. So I'll click Create, and it begins the creation. And this time it's going to take get, gather all the resources it needs for a virtual machine, install the Linux operating system on that, and provide that virtual machine to me. I'm going to pause the video right now. It'll take a few minutes for this to happen, and then I'll come back once it's all done. Okay, it's been about five minutes, and our machine is ready to go. I can come up here to this little bell and see the deployment has succeeded, and go to the resource right here. I can also search for it here under this left menu here, under resource groups, for example. I could find this resource group and open up the virtual machine right here. Same thing. But right here, you see that here's the overview page, and it tells me the name of my machine. Uh, it tells me the operating system and the size, the public IP address, network it's on, etc. Um, and I can go down here and I can configure certain things like uh, setting up networking or adding new disks to my machine or changing the changing the size of my machine and so on. All sorts of things like that. But really what I want to do is, I want, this is my machine, I want to connect to it. And the way I do that is up here under Overview, I click on Connect. And remember when we clicked on Connect we, in, with a Windows machine, we could actually just download an RDP file, open that up, and that was associated with the remote desktop app. Linux doesn't really have that. With Linux, you have to use the command line, and the command to connect to this machine is SSH followed by the user at the IP address. So I can copy that to my clipboard, and then... Uh, open up a command prompt here and paste that and I just right click to paste it and press enter and it asks me are you sure you want to continue connecting this it doesn't have a certificate so it's a concern for me thanks for being so concerned it asks me then it pro prompts me for the password and then I'll, I have to remember the password that I entered for this admin account Enter. And here I am. I'm on the machine. There's a prompt here, and I can do things like list the directories in this folder, even though there, there aren't any directories in here. But like a good Linux user, I'm actually all at the, about the command line. I can install software. I can launch services, anything that I want to do from the command line. This is my machine. I am remotely connected to that machine. In this video, we've talked about Azure Linux virtual machines, and I showed you how to create one and how to connect to it using SSH. Thank you for watching.